Good morning. For the month of May, our sermon series has been the call, the call of God. There are all kinds of calls we get, but sometimes we get a call that feels more intentional, feels more spiritual, it feels more divine. And so we've been focusing this month on the call of God on our lives. Today, the call to us, the call to us. Some have said we're, we are through COVID and others say, well, we're still in COVID and it depends on who you are. So I'd like to begin by talking about we are journeying through COVID, reaching for a new normal. Last Monday, we gathered together on United Chats on the Zoom call, and we discussed what had we gained from COVID, or what, yeah, what had, what, what had happened, what had we picked up while coming through COVID. And it was interesting that there was a pattern of answers that more or less said that we have gained a closeness with loved ones, um, that we've reached back and drawn closer to those we love and we care about. And so like a banana that gets peeled, we kind of discovered what is essential to us is us. It was nice to hear that with all the bad news that is happening around the world, that of all the things that are going on, that all of the things that COVID has kind of taken from us, that there was a nugget of power in the midst that says the beauty and gift that we always have is the gift of each other, us. I have a new motto for our church. We are small enough to see you. You don't get missed here at our church and we're large enough to matter. But there were some ugly things that happened during COVID, right? There was an ugliness of behavior toward others at the very beginning. Have you guys noticed that when something comes and we don't know a lot about it and we're uncertain, that sometimes that temptation to be ugly kind of lifts its head. In the beginning of COVID, we had attributed this awful sickness or the beginning, the roots of it started in a warehouse in China. The global, the global pandemic already put 12,000 people out of work in the United States of America. And then with the help of our former president, Donald Trump, he labeled it the Chinese virus the Kung Fu virus. This opens the door to racism and bigotry. It opens the door for people to show parts of themselves we would rather not see against Chinese, but not just Chinese, anybody that looked Chinese. And so we're not all that bright. So there were a lot of people that felt under the category of looking Chinese. This was scary to me because now folks, now folks who look Asian are randomly being selected not for the lottery, but for aggressive, abusive behavior. Those people need to go back to China. Some of the rhetoric include, you bought the virus to America. All the sickness spread it by the chinks. We're watching you. We are the true Americans. All of you should die, and all of you should get the Chinese virus. Are you carrying the virus? Get someone else to serve me. I don't want to speak to you because you're Chinese. Get the coronavirus chink away from me. Eugenia Gray out of New York says, my body was picked up and slammed and my dog was kicked by a stranger. An Asian restaurant owner said vandalism spray painted across the windows of his restaurant. Another owner who owned a newspaper stand said the newspaper stands were taken by teenagers and thrown to the ground with all the newspapers all over the ground. During those first few months, Asians reported living in fear. Asians reported avoiding public places, being on alert. By April of 2020, 1,500 cases had been reported and we know that many more people never reported at all. Those people have brought death to our country, said people in ignorance. Those people need to go back to wherever they came from. We don't want you here. Those people deserve to die. Whenever I hear the word they, more often than not, it not only serves as a divider between some chosen group and others less worthy. This is where we enter the biblical text today. There is a deep suspicion of those who are different from us. 
This new community learns that another group, the Gentiles, have become believers, and Peter has been hanging out with them. The, they question Peter on his behavior. This group operates and lives differently than we do. They eat certain meats. They do not circumcise their men. For a Jew, there were lots and lots of dietary restrictions designated around what food you ate and who you ate it with. They further only compromised a small part of a comprehensive holiness code that regulated personality, personal and community life for Hebrew people. These purity laws encompassed every aspect of being human, including ethnicity, which made the Gentiles impure. Yesterday, I went to Chipotle. After working hard at the church and then going to my own home, I was too hungry and too tired to cook. It was a buy your food ready kind of day. In the line, they have different meats you can cook, but today they had a new flavor. They had this chicken called polo asado. Many folks order the same thing. They find what they like when they go out to eat and they get it because they know what they like. But me, I like to try different things. God was asking this new community to try something different, to think differently about themselves, to think differently about what this new community could look like. Peter explains to them, I had this vision. Up until now, mostly we have been attracting folks like us, not them, not those people. And here God is saying it's time for a new flavor. Peter gets a vision and it's pretty clear, new flavor. We are going to allow these folks to be who they are. We are not going to make them submit to our laws. Peter explains to those who have reservations that I have been called to us by God. <clears throat> the Gentiles are receptive to God's word. God's work is advancing. Us just got a new flavor. The Jews were being challenged to be open to this new flavor, not just to order the same thing. Israeli authorities today could use a bit of that challenge to be open to others. China could use a bit of that challenge to be open to others. Russia could use a bit of that challenge to be open to others. America too, to see rules as a guide and not a weapon. This call to be willing to try something different is becoming a new normal for our church. We're still pushing against it. We still want to go back and get the, oh, new flavors are all around us. Asian zing, Jamaican jerk, red pepper hummus, spicy Korean barbecue, teriyaki honey glaze, garlic parmesan, Louisiana rub, Thai curry, Nashville hot salt and vinegar, kimchi, new flavors, new people, God's rainbow, diversity, but it can be scary and it requires us to embrace change. America has a lot of diversity and while some are afraid of it and are trying all they know how to reduce and eradicate it, we are what we are. We are not going anywhere. We who believe in freedom are not going anywhere. Ten people this weekend killed in Buffalo this weekend by hatred that drove one person whose diet clearly was limited by a MAGA code, drove over 200 miles to wreak havoc on innocent, unknowing bystanders. One of the Asians said, this COVID thing, this, we've got to learn how to connect the dots. You know, when you were young and you got those pieces of papers with dots on it and you couldn't see what it was until you began to connect the dots. We have to start sticking up for injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We have to start sticking up for the rights of others, even if it doesn't impact us. Some of us are living comfortably, but we have to stick up for the rights of others because we have to learn, we have to connect the dots. Just because your reproductive rights are over doesn't mean you cannot fight for somebody else's reproductive rights. Recognizing that the threat to many all over the world calls for us to stand, it calls for us to unite. <clears throat> In South Africa, there's this beautiful word called Ubuntu. If any of you know Bishop Desmond Tutu, he loves to use this word. It means we all work together, that we can't do this thing alone. There are no big I's and little U's. Ubuntu emphasized the importance of community. 
Yesterday, a representation and allies of our church showed up on the lawn, Ubuntu. Yesterday, we worked on the lawn. The call went out to all of us. None of us could have done what all of us did. Glory be to God. The youngest person to show up yesterday was seven years old. The oldest was over 70, and we had all kinds of diversity. We here at United Church of Hyde Park, we reflect the world. We were a little short-staffed, but that just meant we stayed a little longer. I can see some of them are still recovering today. People came and left as they needed to go, and each one of us did what we could, and nobody looked down on somebody else because they couldn't do as much as the other person. And we worked together, and that's what we do at United Church of Hyde Park. And if that's all that happened on our lawn yesterday, that would be enough to give God some praise. But something more happened on our lawn. The community started walking up. The community started waking up. The community started coming out. And they greeted us not as strangers like two years ago when we started this, but today they greeted us as people they knew. And it was so great to have conversations with the community and enter into a different kind of relationship. Not they, those, but us. We are a part of this community, and so are you. And so when one guy walked up and said, hey, I've been watching the lawn in this area, I'm like, great, because guess what? It's all of our jobs. It's not their job. It's not our job. It's all of our jobs. We have to be united as a team to keep this area beautiful and safe. We can't do it alone. We cannot make it alone. If you want to go fast, you can go alone. But if you want to go far, you go united. We need each other. I feel some kind of way when people are always talking about me, 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 me. Doesn't it get on your nerve when people are like, look at me, look at me. And they bring attention to themselves. And I also feel kind of way when people have to point out, you, 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 they're always pointing the finger. They always notice the wrong. They always are good at pointing out negativity. I feel some kind of way about them. And I feel some kind of way about they, they, those people over there, those people on our line. Not really great vibes. But when people begin to use the language of Ubuntu, I am because we are. When I hear folks stepping up to say, that we are in this thing together, we are. That is music to my ears. This is us, this will be us. In the words of Kendrick Lamar, we gonna be all right, we. We are in this thing together, not this person over here fixing it, we are on this boat together. We are united. We are the body of Christ. We are God's hands and feet and mercy and grace and operation in the world. We are distinct as fingers, but whole as the hand. We are a family. We work together. We gather together. We pray together. We care for each other and the world together. No, you, 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 me, 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 they, they, they. We bleed the same. We hurt the same. And we love the same. We learned during COVID what matters is us. This call to us is not just for Peter. It's for us. And we made it this far through COVID together, practicing safety. But let us not forget the lesson of what's really important is us. And today we are so happy to celebrate Asian Awareness, Asian American Awareness Month. And we are so glad for our Asian sisters and brothers and the richness of their story. Because as Anne said, history is all of our stories. And so we're so happy for their story, their survival. We're happy that we got the chance to watch the documentary. We are glad for the role they have played in the history of our church and their presence with us today. Thank you so much. Kamsi Hamnida, Chimto Shah, Dumai Riga Togo Zimas. Thank you, thank you so much. 
We are united in following Christ and the radical teaching of justice and grace and mercy and love. And like Peter, we answer this call to us, not this call to me, not this call to you, this call to be united and to educate others as we go. The text concludes here, and I love it, in verse 12, and I could read it over and over again. Therefore, now make no more distinctions moving forward between them and us. The call to be united. Amen.